Is Minato a psychopath? Right off the bat, I'm going to admit this isn't my theory or an original concept. I was tagged on Twitter about it with a link to a Tumblr article from almost three years ago, so this theory has definitely been around for a little bit. I'll touch on the theory later towards the end of the video, but I think the question is Minato a psychopath is interesting enough itself to talk about. Talking about this, it's inevitable that I'm going to have to talk about the way the shinobi war works in the first place, the way it trains you and mentally conditions you to believe certain things that the majority of people in our world just wouldn't be able to understand. It's also necessary to find the term psychopath so I don't get caught in a what I like to call vague language predicament and so I can be completely understood. Psychopath as Oxford language has defined it formally as a person suffering from a chronic mental disorder with abnormal or violent social behavior and the informal definition of an unstable and aggressive person. The informal definition definitely fits the way the term is colloquially used more than the formal definition. Psychopath just has the connotations of a crazy person. Connotation just meaning the feeling a word gives you aside from its literal definition. Crazy person is just what most people think when hearing the term. Nevertheless, I'm going to go over if Minato fits either definition of a psychopath, and I'm probably going to have to get into the mental state of other characters as well, just for comparison. So if you're into things like this, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing. I put a lot of work into the video, so I really would appreciate it. Let's get started with the way shinobi are trained and conditioned to fight, especially in times of war or great conflict. Me and you wake up in the morning and check our phone for notifications. A lot of these guys wake up and sharpen their kunai, and go train to make sure they don't get killed when they go outside to fight someone from another village. The 25th rule of shinobi conduct is, no matter what happens, true shinobi must never show their emotions. The mission is the only priority. Carry that in your heart and never shed a tear. We are told this by Sakura all the way back in chapter 31, as she's crying over what she thinks is the dead body of her friend and crush Sasuke pointing out the person who said it is important because Sakura, as always, got perfect scores on her test. In school, she memorized each one of the 100 rules of shinobi conduct for Ninja and Shinobi. Minato is a person like this as well. We know Minato had the highest score on the written part of the Chunin exams ever, so this is likely something he kept with him throughout most of his fights to make himself a more effective shinobi on the battlefield. Later on, I'll likely get into why it's important Naruto didn't study these rules of shinobi conduct, but for now, let's talk about the different qualities of a ninja. When it comes to the quality of a ninja, their mental state when entering the battlefield is extremely important for a multitude of factors. Kakashi gives us an extremely important way of thinking back whenever they have the first bell test with Team 7 making a play as individuals is bad for the team and exposes your comrades to unnecessary danger. You might as well kill them yourself is what he tells the rest of the team. He then demonstrates by making Sakura choose to either kill Naruto or he will kill Sasuke. This is a very realistic view of the shinobi world and possibly makes Kakashi an even better teacher than Jiraiya, at least in his early days. The reason I say this is because Jiraiya's students were put in this exact same situation and not only did a comrade die, a whole lot of other people did as well. The Akatsuki was born, etc, etc, you get the point. I'm not saying this is Jiraiya's fault, just that Yahiko, Konon, and Nagato not being prepared for a situation like this speaks to how realistic he is as a teacher. And hey, maybe Jiraiya did teach him after all, and even still when presented with the situation, it was too much for them. Also, to be completely fair, we don't know how Conan was captured by Hanzo, so maybe she didn't try to make a play on her own and was just kidnapped during her sleep or something along those lines. Anyway, I know it must feel as if I've deviated from the original topic, which is if Minato is a psychopath, but that was a lot of exposition I felt was needed to start talking about the next part, that being loss and how Minato deals with it and seems to deal with others' loss. Our first encounter with Minato experiencing a loss is Obito, in which we don't see too much of a reaction from him, although we don't get to see him until hours after the encounter is already over, and he's already saved Kakashi and Rin, so while he could have had some mental breakdown after finding out Obito died, I'm gonna say it's highly unlikely, not only due to the 25th rule of shinobi conduct I mentioned earlier, but due to other examples I'm about to start talking about. And when it is we see Minato actually start to care for the loss of his loved ones. The next quote unquote heavy loss Minato suffers is Ren and his reaction to this is not ever shown on panel in the manga, 
But there is an anime filler arc that kind of covers his actions following the third great war and becoming Hokage. And yes, we all know anime filler is non-canon content, but I think it's kind of accurate representation of his character in a weird way. After losing his friends, Kakashi becomes a very cold person. Minato seeing this decides to task Kakashi with guarding Kushina instead of being out in the field all the time to limit his kill count and how cold he has to be. This at least shows Minato cares enough about Kakashi's mental health to take the steps to avoid making it worse and actively try to make it better. This is fairly consistent with an earlier interaction Minato has with Obito where Obito doesn't understand the way Kakashi acts and why he consistently belittles him. Minato takes the time to explain to Obito why Kakashi acts the way he acts not only to cheer Obito up but to give Obito a better understanding of his own teammate. He does this while simultaneously showing us that he genuinely understands Kakashi as a person as well. This part isn't all too similar but you could take it as consistency if you want to, I personally wouldn't know. After witnessing Chidori for the first time, Minato breaks down the jutsu and gives Kakashi a reason as to why he should never use it again. This is Minato looking after a teammate in the middle of war. Could be to preserve war power for the leaf or maybe he genuinely cares about Kakashi. Me personally, I would go with that interpretation. I'm sure Minato had to deal with tons of loss in the war, but on screen we get to see literally none of that and we arrive at his final loss being his family and his own life. The decisions made by Minato at this point in the series are extremely crucial to the entire series as the ones he chose literally set it up in the first place, but there are probably other ways he could have gone about it and I'll take that into account when analyzing the decisions here. Anyway, during the events of the Nine Tails attack after summoning Game of Bunta on top of Kurama, we see Minato on Bunta's head, sort of lost in thought. He thinks of Obito's earlier quote, that he'll rule the world, and then says, Kushina forgive me. Obviously for the decision he's already made. Is here we see another fairly consistent element of Minato's character, and we see him cry for the first time in the series. Kushina tells Minato that if she imagines herself alive and their future together as a family of three, she couldn't see them being anything but happy. Then Minato tears up at the thought of what could have been. Make a mental note of this as this is the part of his character I'm saying is fairly consistent and I'll obviously bring it up later when we get to that point in the series. I just think it's fairly important to talk about Minato's decision that literally set up the entire show to sacrifice not only himself but his wife as well and have his son be looked at as a demon just in hopes that in the future Naruto would stop the mass man he had fought earlier. This is dedication to a village over himself and requires incredible resolve that a Hokage should obviously have. Now let's look at this from another perspective because there is a few people who find this decision is not really dumb but probably not the best one he could have made either. I've been vocal about this before, I don't think a character not acting in the most efficient way possible is a bad thing, so I'm not going to contradict myself here, but let's take a second look. This perspective looks at Minato as a gaslighter, saying that he's gaslighting Kushina into thinking this is the correct way of going about taking the W in the future from Madara and for the future of the Leaf. Let's look at the definition of gaslight or what it is to gaslight and see if what Minato is doing fits the context. Oxford Languages says to gaslight is to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. Some other sources list it as an extreme destructive form of brainwashing or manipulation, but let's look at some examples to better get an idea before moving forward. There are examples of this that apply to specific things like relationships, parenting, being at work, etc, etc, but I'm going to give fairly universal examples here that I think most people should be able to relate to from just living life, maybe going to school or something like that. The first of which being shifting the blame, which is blaming someone else for your own mistakes. The second being downplaying the feelings of others by telling them that they're being overly dramatic or sensitive. Gaslighting is a tactic commonly used by sociopaths, which is defined by Oxford languages as a person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior or lack of conscience. Someone who is a sociopath is typically going to have an extremely weak conscience. They might not know what they're doing is wrong or they might even feel slightly guilty or a bit of remorse over their actions, but it won't stop them from actually doing the action. Sociopaths are typically going to only care about themselves or things that better their position. 
They sort of lack the ability to be empathetic or make selfless decisions. While it might be true that most psychopaths are sociopaths, not all sociopaths are psychopaths. So this way of thinking still doesn't get us to the conclusion that Minato is a psychopath, just that Minato would be a sociopath. Now I'd like to take it back to the time period of the Third War, where I think Minato says something pretty interesting that seems to be rather psychotic. During his first of many encounters with Killer B and the 4th Raikage, who was just A at the time, Minato, after outspeeding the Raikage, goes for a strike at the back of the Raikage, who was moved out of the way by his brother B at the last second. Minato put an FTG seal on B so that he could teleport to him, which B was expecting and put his sword to position towards Minato, would teleport, and says he's prepared to engage in a mutual strike. Minato's response to this is, I'm growing fond of you enemy, you've definitely got the moves of a shinobi killer. Focusing specifically on the reason listed by Minato as to why he likes B, that being he's got the moves of a shinobi killer. Now being honest, no, I don't think that makes Minato a psychopath. I think this speaks more to the world of Naruto and how these people are raised. Sort of like I said earlier, these people are trained especially in times of war like this to kill when you run into the enemy taking advantage of child soldiers like Rin, Kakashi, and Obito, and this isn't something that stops or gets better later on. The world is just inherently messed up this way, in this sort of aspect. They are obsessed with war. Whenever we're being introduced to the Chunin exams after the force of death portion is over, here's an ask the participants of the exams, quote, why do you suppose an examination of this nature is being jointly conducted by all of the nations in our mutual alliance? He then follows up with the reason they normally say, quote, to promote friendship among allied nations and raise the level and standards of the art of shinobi. Hirzen tells them to be clear about what those fine sounding phrases actually mean. This series of so-called examinations is in fact a war in miniature between all of the allied shinobi lands. So as to not repeat Hirzen's entire speech, I'll just sum up the rest of what he goes on to mention. He mentions how the alliances between the villages are nothing but a temporary beneficial agreement between two geographical contentious lands and that the Chunin exams are designed to show the best of the other nation's upcoming battle power by having their young shinobi fight to death if need be. And that it is more important than the fact that the Chunin exams weed out anyone who is unfit to ascend to the level of Chunin. This is also about gaining work for specific nations. If a nation has shinobi come in and display incredible skill, they are going to get commissioned for work more often since they have a very capable shinobi and same goes to the opposite. The nation that shows low competence will receive less work and less commissions due to the incompetence in their shinobi. I may have strayed a little off topic here, but evaluating the world or society someone lives in is key to analyzing why they exhibit certain behavior. I'm essentially saying with all of this in mind that killing in Minato's eyes is likely just seen as something he has to do, something like another mission. So when he says to B and A that he's beginning to like them because they have the instincts of a shinobi killer, it's probably him just saying that they've been well trained or that they are similar to him. Now this begs the question, if just everybody in the Naruto world is a psychopath, since they, in a way, romanticize killing, war, and other violent acts. This is really up to us, the viewers, to answer independently, so I'll just give my answer. You can see if you agree with me or not. I think Minato is very kind, noble, and caring. These characteristics, I think, are undisputable. Data books and other extra material that let us know more things about Minato for example, did you know a character's blood type in Naruto can dictate their personality? Minato's type is type B, shared by his son Naruto, each of the three Sanin, and other powerful shinobi. The blood type description reads as follows. Many of the shinobi are uninhibited and hate to lose. They are cheerful, but their impulsiveness gets them into trouble at times. There are two things to be pointed out here that I like to focus on. That being that the person is uninhibited and cheerful. Uninhibited as defined by Oxford languages means expressing one's feelings or thoughts unselfconsciously and without restraint. This is gonna be very important for this upcoming section of the video as it essentially means Minato's words are what he's really feeling at the time and he's not trying to trick anyone by acting emotional. The data book also confirms Minato was in a state of mourning after finding out Obito was alive and essentially that he was responsible for everything following his fight with him since he didn't recognize him that day. It also mentions how Naruto was the one who cheered him up from this weakened and mourning state. We also get to see Minato legitimately tear up at Naruto's words and actions 
which I do think show he genuinely cares, like I mentioned earlier. As far as him being noble, he's just praised to be as such by other reputable shinobi, like the fourth Raikage who fought him numerous times and is described to be gentle by people like Tsunade who likely knew him through Jiraiya. Then that brings us to the second final day of Minuto's life, which is ironically the same day as the first time he died, which was on Naruto's birthday where he wishes Naruto a happy birthday and tells him he's really become a splendid shinobi, which as we know from earlier, is something Minato values heavily. There is also a moment here where he almost starts to tear up again and tells Naruto that he promises to tell Kushina everything once he gets back to the Pure Lands, of course. All in all, I think the theory that Minato is a psychopath is a fun theory, but it's relatively unrealistic. It's definitely not one formed on pure intuition, and what I mean by that is it's not an implication you're going to get from just reading the manga or watching the anime for the first time. I don't know if I'll do any more psychoanalysis or videos on this channel, after all I'm not a psychologist, I'm just a YouTuber who knows a lot of big words. So this video was fun to do, but at the same time also quite mentally farming. But that's all for me, if you could leave a like on the video I'd appreciate it a lot took a great deal of work um, to actually get this done um, and also just consider subscribing as well. But other than that, have a nice day.